Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about the molar stroke because I just released a reissue of the first edition molar book, but more about that later. So the molar stroke essentially boils down to a whipping motion for the right hand or for the left in matched grip, or the way he describes it in the book is a flicking water off the fingers motion in the traditional underhand left hand grip. So if we think about how a whip works, it's like a long rope and so you can't move the tip the way that you can move a drumstick, right? Drumstick, you can start from the tip, move it anywhere you want. Uh, a whip or a rope, you can't. You have to move the handle end first for the front to actually go anywhere. So if you think about how we normally play a stroke linearly, we just move the tip down to play. In a molar stroke, what we're doing is we're uh, moving the handle first and the tip follows later, and you get that whip cracking motion. It helps you achieve bigger accents because of course the tip is now moving faster since it is accelerated by being the last thing to move. In matched grip the same thing happens with the left hand. We move the back of the stick up, we move the back of the stick down, and the tip follows behind for a whipping type of stroke. Okay? If we're playing traditional grip, like I said it's a flicking water off of your fingers motion. You're flipping the stick out, but basically you're still leading with the back end and then the tip follows rather than our linear normal left hand stroke. So here we have an actual first edition molar book from 1925. It has 174 pages. This is the most comprehensive version that had ever come out. Um, in 1929 they made a revision and they took a whole bunch of pages out and it was really pretty hard for me to come up with one of these. It took a while of looking uh, before I finally found one for sale somewhere. My molar book that I just came out with is the same book. It's that first edition with all the pages, 174 pages, and of course it is a modern printing um, so you can just do with it what you will and not worry about damaging an antique. The thing is you could buy a molar book from like Steve Weiss or wherever um, and it's the same price but you're only going to get 96 pages. So you're missing a whole bunch of pages of stuff molar actually wanted you to see. right? So if you really want to know about the molar stroke you don't want the lesser paged version, you want all the pages. There's going to be more rudiments, uh, more exercises, more quick steps, more solos, more camp duty signals. Uh, more discussion in text. It's got all kinds of extra stuff in here that they don't have in the other commercially available one. So you definitely want mine. And again, they're the same price. So why wouldn't you get mine? The other half of the molar stroke is, of course, the up motion. So playing the whip is the down. To get to the whip, like I said, you move the back of the stick first and that tilts the stick down. Well, the up stroke is just having the tip hit the drum during that tilt. You're not playing a note and then lifting. The lift is the stroke. And then you're prepared for a downstroke. In traditional grip, same thing. You're going to lift the back of the stick first, which levers the front of the stick into the drum on the way up. And then you're going to play your whip on the way down. But just to get there, you're going to hit the drum on the way up, down, up, down. And so if you put those together, You can play a series of strokes with an up and down motion. I have another video on basic strokes, up strokes, and down strokes in general if you want to figure out what that is, but the molar version of it allows you to get better accents and to play more efficiently, actually. So if you put the molar strokes up and down together, of course, you hear that there's a difference in the volume, obviously. And if that's okay, like if you're playing drum set, sometimes you want that groove, it's actually really handy for playing really fast. with minimal effort. I could do that for a while. I could play the same speed without the molar stroke. But that's about as long as I can do it for. My wrist and my forearm start cramping up almost immediately. If I play the molar stroke, I just do this for a while, feeling fine. I could just keep going indefinitely. No uh, pain, no cramping, it's totally fine. So that fluidity of playing, if you can afford the variation in sound, super helpful. Uh, something that it's very difficult to get with any other technique. 
except I, you could do it with push pull. What is push pull? But it's actually the same thing as molar. You're just using your fingers instead of your wrist. Now, what push pull is not as good for that molar is is accents. If you're playing along and you need an accent, you can get a big old accent out of a molar whipping stroke because you're accelerating the tip of that stick. If you're just doing that linearly, I move the same amount, I don't get quite the same burst of energy. I have to do more to get that the same level of accenting. So, super handy, super interesting. If you really want to know about it, not from me, but from the original guy, you can get my version of the first edition. Again, it's the same price as the other non-first edition, but you get more book. So why wouldn't you do it? All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.